Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Turning Browsers into Buyers, the Six Keys to Online Lead Generation Dominance in Your Market. My name is Michelle Lettman, and I'm the content and media producer here at Surefire Local. I am joined by our webinar ninja, Steve Eastlack, who is ready and excited to help answer your questions. Speaking of those questions, you can communicate with us using the question box, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, why don't you go ahead and see if you can locate that right now and let us know where you're joining us from today. We'll be sending messages and discussion questions to the group throughout the webinar, so be sure to check that out. Before we get into online lead generation dominance in your market, I want to tell you a little bit about how the Surefire Local started and the story behind how the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud is the marketing solution that works as hard as you do. It all started with the small business owner who taught his son the value of hard work. The son, our founder and CEO, Chris, went on to lead several venture-backed Web 2.0 web startups, but he never forgot the memories of watching his dad get up early in the morning to track down new business. He wondered if there was a way for 21st century technology to multiply the efforts of small local companies like his father's. Turns out there was. Surefire Local started with an idea, a way to help small businesses rank higher in search engines. Today, it's an unbeatable marketing engine backed up by expert consultants with one mission, help local businesses generate new business by getting discovered online. The Surefire Local Marketing Cloud allows you to do three things, see more, do more, and get more help. Over the past years, we've had the privilege of working alongside hundreds of local companies and watching many of them double and triple their leads with Surefire Local. Some call it a digital marketing transformation, but we just call it hardworking marketing for hardworking people. Today, one lucky attendee is going to take home a Google Home Mini Smart Speaker. We will be announcing the winner at the end. If you don't win one, though, you don't have to go home empty-handed. Everyone here today is eligible to get a Google Chromecast. It's a scheduled consultation with one of our digital marketing experts, but I will get more to that later. Today, we are joined by Tim Moosh, who is the Director of Business Development at MarketSharp, and our very own Senior VP of Client Services, Bob Sheehan. They have an awesome presentation for you all today, so sit back and relax, and Tim, you can take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Michelle, and thanks for the invitation to join you on your webinar here today. You guys do a great job with these webinars, so it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Bob in a bit and introduce Bob, uh, but let's get to some intro information and let's dive right into the content here. First off, a little bit of great news. We could all use that anytime. Don't see much on TV anymore, but as it relates to our industry, many of you maybe follow this index. It's called the Leading Indicator of Remodeling Activity, done by the folks at Harvard University, the joint centers um the Joint Center of Housing Studies at Harvard University. And what they do is they pretty much take a look at what's going on in the remodeling industry, do some predictions about what's likely to happen, and they're usually right on. And what I love about this chart is, as you can see, it's trending upward. The point is the remodeling industry right now is really kind of booming, it really is. And I think the point of this, and the reason I wanted to show you this here today, I think because of this, this is exactly why we should be talking about this stuff we're talking about today, because this the time right now is right to really capture the opportunity that's out there, and we want to make sure our businesses are efficient as efficient as possible. So just some information from the folks at the Joint Center for Housing Studies. Uh, this individual says recent strengthening in U.S. economy, uh, tight for sale housing inventories, and healthy home equity gains are all working to boost home improvement activity. And as you can see here, owners are predicted to spend in excess of $330 billion on home upgrades and replacements, as well as routine maintenance. So that's what we do. And uh, I think we all, again, want to be in a position to capture as much of that as we possibly can. So when we look at the title of today's webinar, Turning Browsers into Buyers, that's kind of a, that's kind of a headline. Then we got the subtitle, The Six Keys to Online Lead Generation Dominance in Your Market. And we're going to do our best to give you some of these ideas and kind of fill in some blanks. The six keys themselves probably aren't new to you guys, but maybe we can give you some encouragement in terms of how you can get a little better at each one of these six keys as you go forward. But here's some more great news. When you really think about it, this thing called the Internet truly is the great equalizer. I mean, you can be, a, for, for lack of a better way to describe it, a really small business. But based on your presence online, you can compete with the really big people. Because it's not like you have to have a 15,000 square foot showroom or anything like that to do that here. So keep that in mind. This thing called the web really can equalize your business with the big boys should you decide to do it. Now keep in mind, it can also work the reverse. If you don't have these strategies in order, people will crush you. Your competitors will crush you online if you're really not up to the task of equalizing with everybody that's out there. Now, before we get going, I just want to share something with you I share with a lot of groups. Uh, I think it's ingenious. 
It's called a three-step marketing plan for success. And this is something that came from an individual that maybe some of you know. Jim Rohn is his name. Business philosopher, unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. But he came up with this. And I think this is a great blueprint to create a marketing plan for your business. Here's what he said. He says, hey, you guys out there in the marketing world, first off, all you got to do is have something good to say. Then he secondly said, say it well. And then finally, he said, say it often. And you know, that really makes a ton of sense. Kind of a great message. You got to figure out how to articulate it well in your marketing and then get it out there just as much as you possibly can. And we're going to kind of base everything off this little formula as we go through this stuff here today. So let's identify the six keys. And again, don't worry if these things look really familiar to you. Hopefully we'll shed some new light on some of them. But here's what they are. There's six of them. First off, have something good to say. So we're going to start right away with Jim Rohn and talk about that for a couple of minutes because it's really huge. If this isn't in order, the rest of the things we're going to talk about here today really aren't going to help much. Then you've got to be able to stop visitors, meaning on your website, in their tracks. You really do. Otherwise, maybe Bob can chime in later. Otherwise, oftentimes people will land on your site and vanish within seconds. You can't stop people in their tracks. And then finally, or not finally, but next, you got to generate quality traffic. After you got the first two steps handled, it's time to get people to your site. And then your site has to have what we call conversion ability. And this is a big one that many sites lack. So we're going to spend a few minutes on that. And then it's important that you showcase your best online. And uh, that'll be a little bit more clear to you as we get to that in the discussion here today. And then finally, you really need to know your numbers in terms of how everything is working for you in this world. So let's begin with key number one, having something good to say. And, and I love this illustration of what we're trying to talk about here today. And, and here's really what you want with your business, isn't it? You don't want to be just like everybody else that you compete with. You really want to stand out. So here's what you want, and here's what you might be think is, what you might think is happening in your business. But in all reality, in most cases, I got, I got bad news for many of you. This is what's really happening. You really aren't standing out because oftentimes your marketing, the way you come across, is pretty much just like everyone else in the business. So with that in mind, let's move forward and talk about uh, really how to separate your business. And here's a common question that I often get. And here's what it says. It says, how can we compete with companies that appear to sell very similar products and services to our prospects at a much lower price? Because when you think about it, many of us do sell products that are quite similar. Now, sure, we might have a window that has a different looking lock on it or something like that. Uh, but you're, when you get right down to it, Many of our competitors sell stuff that's very similar to what we sell, especially from the perception of a consumer. So I want to make one alteration to this question, and here's what it is, one key word. Here's what our mission is. Instead of not having that key word emphasized here, here's what we really need to be thinking. How can we compete with companies that appear to sell very similar products and services to our prospects at a much lower price? Our job is to make sure our company appears differently in our marketing so we don't blend in with the rest. That's one of our challenges. So you really got to refine what we call your value proposition. And defining that, really what that is, is it's an innovation service or feature intended to make a company or product attractive to customers. Something that's different. That's what you got to have. So here's a prerequisite, very important. You really do have to stand out from the crowd in order to really maximize what you've got going on. And I often share this, and maybe you've been on some webinars with us in the past and have, have heard me share this. Here's a good example of what I think we have to do with our business to separate ourselves. Let's say you're driving to work one day and you drive by a cow pasture like we have many in Wisconsin here, and you see this. And you see a bunch of normal black and white cows, and you see one cow that's just purple and white. I think what you would do is you go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe what I saw. And you'd drive to work, and what's the first thing you would tell somebody at work that you run into? You'd say, I saw a purple cow today. You cannot believe it. In other words, your experience was truly, in a literal sense of the word, remarkable. And you wouldn't be able to help but make remarks about it. And that's my point. That's what people have to feel about your business after they do business with you. they got to feel like the experience was so awesome. They can't help but make remarks about it in the literal sense of the word. So here's a suggestion. Get a book. Really a short read. It's been out for a few years, but still very relevant today. It's written by really what I think is a, a great visionary in the marketing world called Seth Godin. And the uh, title of the book, surprisingly, is The Purple Cow. And it's going to give you some ideas of how you in the remodeling business can truly separate yourself from everybody else that sells the same kind of stuff you do in ways that maybe you never thought of before. Because oftentimes you can't with a truly unique product because there aren't very many out there. So just a suggestion, maybe grab onto that book, get some ideas. So here's a question for you. What's your USP? 
and I think many of you know what the term, what the letters USB stand for, and uh, what they are, and they've been around the marketing circles for years. You know, it stands for unique selling proposition. Do you really, really, truly have one? So ask yourself that question, and uh, I think if you're honest with yourself, in many cases, some of you would have to come up and say, you know, I don't think we do. I think we do sell stuff that's similar to our competitors. You know, our installers are kind of similar. I'm not sure we do. So I've got a tool for you here. It's a great brainstorming tool to help you come up with a value proposition that's truly different. It's called the USP Worksheet. And I won't take time to get into the details. It's really self-explanatory. But this will take you through an exercise that will make you understand whether or not you, first off, have a truly unique value proposition and having something good to say or whether you don't. And if you discover that, you know what, I really don't, it's going to give you some suggestions of how you can come up with one. And then at the very end, on the second page, as you can see, there's a few lines there. Then you're going to articulate it in as few words as possible. And that's something many of us don't do. People might ask, what does your company do? And you go on and on and on and on about various stuff, but you don't have that concise way to describe it in a manner that really separates your company from the crowd. So this particular uh, brainstorm tool, it's a PDF file, is available for you, as are a couple other items we'll talk about later, for immediate access in the handouts section of your control panel. And I suggest you get this thing, sit down with your staff and say, hey, let's figure out a way that we can truly be different from our competitors. Once you get that covered, then you can go on to key number two. And what this is is stopping visitors in their track when they visit your site. So to illustrate that, let's talk about how marketing used to work and still does to a degree when people would shop. And uh, here's what I'm talking about, window shopping. You know, that's why a lot of people used to buy stuff. You know, they would go to a, a district, a retail district, and check out the window displays if something grabs their attention. It stops them in their tracks like it did this girl right here. And into the store they go and they buy it. But I think, unfortunately, this can also happen. There is no stopping in the tracks, and that's what we've got to avoid with our website. We've got to have a website that will truly stop people in their tracks like a great window display of yesteryear. So to illustrate this, just a couple examples of some websites. Here's one that I would just consider is just a me too bland website. You know, you see thousands of these out there where it really is not compelling at all. Why choose us? We pride ourselves in just platitude things here that really don't speak to anybody about anything. So hate to say it that way, but there are sites that, that do this kind of stuff. And oftentimes these kind of sites are typically put up by people that maybe aren't professionals in marketing, maybe it's brother-in-law that's a geek that can put up a website and the company owner says, hey, put up a website for me. And they say, what do you want on it? And he says, I don't know, here's some brochures of the stuff we sell. Just put that on there. You know, and it's not gonna do it for you. See, this is a better example of the kind of site that might really be useful for you and have some great stuff in there that'll do the job for you, just like that window display that stopped that girl in their tracks. This site can do the same thing. So at this point, I'm gonna bring a good friend in for a couple comments uh, from him, and this is Bob Sheehan. And I've known Bob for a number of years, and uh, it's great to have him on this webinar with me on this one. So Bob, you wanna make some comments about some of the elements in this site? Um, by the way, yeah. these are some friends of ours, Twin City Siding Professionals from the Minneapolis area. Um, so maybe you can give some insight in terms of some things on this site that really help it perform. Sure, Th and thanks, Tim. It's re it really is a pleasure to be on with you, and uh, I love doing these webinars. Uh, the, the, the site that you see in front of you is one of our uh, oldest clients, Twin City Siding Professionals. And, and I was involved in, in putting this together um, you know, a few years ago, and, and I think it has a lot of the uh, elements that, that a site really should have. And we're, we're trying to make sure that, that we bring a lot to the table in terms of you know, kind of putting our best foot forward, making sure that, that the site you know, makes it easy for somebody to do what we want them to do, and, and that, that a site, you know, that it has the contact mechanisms that it's supposed to have. You know, you'll see the, the, the phone number in the top right hand corner is something that obviously we want to make sure happens, but we've actually highlighted that with a call us now and an arrow to kind of make that stand out. Um, we, we use things like the Elite Preferred logo up, up on the top left with the, uh, with the logo, and that's a, a credential, right? It's something that they've earned that separates them from the rest of the pack and, and makes them different from their competition. Um, and we've certainly, uh, you know, they, they engaged a, a copywriter to help them with some of this and, and the, the headlines on this are, are right on and, and definitely 
uh, you know, say something different about this company. It's not your typical, you know, we have siding, we have roofing, and we have, you know, here's a deal, and, you know, come to us. It's, we're trying to say something a little bit different here. Um, there's also a lot of, uh, you know, thought gone into things like placement, right? When you, when you look at a page like this and you see the, the offer on the right-hand side halfway down the page, that's how people's eyes travel. So what, what, we, what we've seen in some of the research that, that's been done on how people use websites is, you know, they'll, they'll start in the top left-hand corner and then they'll kind of move to the, to the middle right. And we try to make sure that there's a contact form in that place and an offer that helps people to, you know, make the decision to come to us. And we find that on, on sites that, that have this kind of a, of a setup to them, uh, we can get the conversion rates to, to improve by, you know, two, three, four percent over where, you know, if they were on the other side. Um, makes a big difference where you put things. So, you know, the idea would be to, uh, to stop people, number one, and then once you have them there and they're interested in the page because you've put enough on here uh, to engage them, that we make it easy uh, to, to come to us and, and, you know, become a lead. So th there's a lot going on on this page, uh, and, and it's all there for a reason, and, and we encourage our, our customers to, to, you know, do that. that the personal story, I think, is a really good one that Tim just highlighted. Um, there's a there's a lot on here about the actual people who own this business and and what makes them different, and and that's really really important. You don't just want to be, you know, the the roofer who looks like every other roofer who sells the same product that every other roofer has. You want to be the people that do it differently, the people that care about their customers in a different way, or or that 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 kind of do this business a little bit better and and you know that stand behind it personally so we find that that kind of a thing uh, definitely helps these these websites work so that's that's some of the thought that's gone into that and if you compare that and you look at you know some other sites out there you'll see that um, in many ways uh, you know your average website does not have those kinds of things going on they really you know they, there's not that personal you know endorsement of standing behind the product and kind of being right out front and and putting things in the right place and really thinking about what's going on there. Awesome, Bob. Some great points. And, and you guys and they have done a, done a great job with this site. My guess is they're, they're doing pretty well from this site. So let's move on. Let's talk about key number three. So we got the first things handled, right? We got something good to say. So we got that value proposition. We got this cool message. And then we got a site that's going to stop people in their tracks. Only then should we spend a lot of effort and money generating quality traffic. Because there's nothing worse than spending a bunch of money to get people to a site that won't perform. It's just a waste of money. So now we can go ahead and get some traffic going for our business. So question, where does my website traffic come from? And certainly many areas. You got things like direct traffic. You know, oftentimes you got offline marketing, maybe you're doing direct mail or job site mailers or you got a billboard or you know, you're doing a radio or whatever the case may be. You want to make sure that in all the marketing you're doing, you are highlighting your web address because that's where people want to go to learn more about you. So with direct traffic, they might have your URL for your website, and they're just going to go directly there. So that's certainly one way to, to generate traffic. And then, of course, there's, and I'm going to skip number two for the time being, there's paid traffic, uh, commonly known as pay-per-click, and a lot of people are getting good results with that. But again, it, it takes some expertise to make that stuff work and not have it cost you a bunch of money. Then, of course, there's social media. Then, of course, there's referral traffic, meaning where you might have links to other sites and things such as that. But I think because today's session is, is kind of broad, uh, we can't really drill down into all these things at once. So I think we're going to spend a couple minutes on the search engine aspect of this. And, Bob, I'd like to bring you back in because I know you got some things you'd like to share about search. Sure. So if you if you go to the yeah the digital footprint uh, is this is a really important concept and and Tim mentioned earlier that the web is the great equalizer and this is why right it, it is possible for for a small business to compete with the big companies because being ranked on the web involves doing all of these things right and when when we started this business back uh, several years ago the concept was that a local company a small business could compete with the larger companies by doing all of these things and and coordinating them 
that they were doable by you know average size businesses. You didn't need to have million dollar you know ad budgets in order to do this. Um, but that when you bring all this together and you do all of these things in a coordinated way, that you get um, dominance in your in your marketplace locally, and that you can turn that into leads and and ultimately business and, and return on investment. So that's been the concept of of kind of how we operate, you know, back uh, to the beginning of the company, and and it's still the same today. The only thing that's changed today is that we've we've now put that on a platform and and learned how to how to do that at scale for lots of companies and how to enable customers uh, to do that for themselves in many ways. So th this is the, the concept and, and, and rather than and or. Yeah. And, and if you look here, th this is the kind of the evolution of this and, and back in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was all about keywords, right? It was about, you, you know, if you had, if you wanted to rank for roofing, you made a bunch of pages that had roofing content on them. You said the word roofing a bunch of times and Google would bring people to your page. Um, that, that changed in the, in the around 2007 with web services and it became about content, but more about content that was on your site and content that was off your site and the ability to kind of syndicate content across a lot of different websites. And so we got good at that, right? We used to publish articles across the web in, in PR websites and article, um, you know, aggregation websites. And, and that, that worked for a long time. And the Google algorithm was kind of designed around this idea of we want to find the best content and serve it up for the customer. And then around about 2016, just a very short time ago, that it, it became really about location marketing, right? And, and it became about the idea that not only did Google want to find the best content and the best company and the best website who had that content, but they wanted to find the one that was closest. So now we add in this, this variable or this, this need to, to be local and the need to give Google this proximity signal, right? The, this idea that, you know, I want to be, um, I want to be ranking in my market. I want to be telling Google what that market is. And then I want to, kind of feed the idea that Google will put together the closest uh, person who's looking for what I have and matching them up to my content. And so now we've got that, that extra um, kind of layer onto this uh, of proximity. We do a lot of things to kind of make that work. Um, the other component that, that's really changed in the last few years is this idea of a multi-touch customer journey. We used to think of uh, you know website leads as you know they, they came from the website and that was the last place they were therefore they were website leads, and uh, we we brought them there on a very kind of one dimensional search uh, approach right put some content up Google would bring people there they would convert that was it um, Google will tell you now that their research indicates that the average customer before they become a lead sees your stuff your brand your content your advertising your whatever um, they, they they interact with you 12 or 13 times before they actually become a lead um, and that's very important uh, if you're going to be a marketer now that you've got to figure out how to be in a lot of those different places you've got to do all of these things in a way that 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 scales them but that maintains that local uh, presence so that's why uh, this this has become a little more complicated than it used to be and why we do things like we, we, we put this, um, these capabilities onto platforms so that customers and frankly us um, can, can do these things at scale in an easier way um, so that they'll work, right? We've, we've now got that obligation to do more things than we used to. And here's what the search engine results page looks like. So now, not only are we doing all of these things, um, but we're doing them for, for different reasons, right? And, and, and we have that opportunity to be in different places on the page by doing um, many different things. So if you look at a typical search engine results page, you've now got that advertising section at the top. Google takes that four, first four positions and dedicates that to ads. Uh, so you can literally buy your way there. Um, it's just a question of paying a penny more than the guy who's number two and you can be number one. Um, it is that simple. Um, and you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into Kind of managing that money and those bids and all of that and getting the right ROI from that, but it's a it's a formula, right? You can you can do that and, and it's and it's a it's a very uh, kind of understandable thing. 
Um, in the in the middle of the page, you've got now this local component, which is the maps. And there are things that we do to get people on the maps, and and that's related to Google My Business and the proximity signals that we have on the website, and how all that location data works, how your directories are set up, and how all of that consistency is there. So now you can be um, prominent in the maps at the same time as prominent in paid search and then you've got the third piece which is organic SEO which is now what we used to call just SEO right and can I rank number one or can I rank number you know on the first page for a particular keyword and you'll see that by using different tactics here I can actually be in three different places on the first page of Google for a particular keyword in my market locally and when I do that um, not only do I get three shots on goal, which is a really important, you know, concept here. I want to, if I can be there three times, I want to be there three times because now that's three opportunities for customers to see me. But if I'm only there once versus the guy who's there three times, um, that's two other slots that could be occupied by competitors that are not. So you have that extra added, you know, dimension to this of keeping competitors off of that page at the same time. So there's all that much more reason to do these things and and to make this work, right? And when it works, it, it really works. So we think about it in, in a lot of different um, ways, but it really boils down to the four big things that impact local rankings that generate traffic, right? Recency, how often are you doing um, publishing on the web? How often are you touching your Google My Business listings? How often are you... Um, updating your social media. Proximity, where are you? Um, it, what kind of signals are being sent from the website and from your social media that tell the search engines where you are, where your, where your website wants to rank so that they can match that content up with the location of the visitor, right? Relevancy, I definitely want to have relevant, and Tim called it earlier, um, that we want to have good content. We want to have the, the best possible content on the website that relates the most to your business so that when, when Google's looking for uh, content to serve up to a visitor, that they, that they serve yours because it's better. Google's become this big kind of language engine that really evaluates content and they know what good content is now. And so they, we definitely think about making the content relevant and quality. And then prominence would be how you rank in places like the maps and you know organic and and all of these different uh, social media, so that 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 kind of prominence brings traffic again, and 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 more traffic brings better rankings, and and it, you know it's kind of a virtuous cycle. So we think of local SEO as maps. Um, we think of kind of SEO in general as things that we do to the website that aren't paid, um, but it all works together. And it's all designed to, to work so that you get to different places on the page um, with, with the same kind of set of efforts, right? And, and we, can, we can get better shots on goal and, and keep the competitors out of there. And, and all of that means more leads for you. So we, we, we showed this, this list here or this, um, this kind of screenshot because what's happened now is there's, there's more and more dimensions to, to local, right? It used to be you had a Google My Business page and you you managed that and it had a, it had a category on it and had you know maybe some information. Well well now they they've actually given the, the visitor to these pages the option to see only customers who might be open on Sunday or only uh, uh, companies who might be uh, you know, open on twenty, open twenty four hours or whatever, and the customer now has the ability to filter those results. So all the more important that your customer or that your company be represented correctly on your uh, Google My Business and your and your directory listings across the internet, and that that match what's on your website. So that now you know you'll you'll be telling your customer the correct time that you're open, and we find that that certainly impacts rankings and it impacts uh, how many visitors you get to your website. Okay, well thank you Bob and Tim. We're gonna take a quick break here and um, do a quick poll and ask or see if you guys would like to learn how Surefire Local and MarketSharp can help you out. So if you would like to know, please say yes. Um, and then if you say yes, 
you will then attend a digital marketing consultation to learn more about how Surefire and Market Sharp can help you out, and then you will be eligible to get a Google Chromecast that I talked about earlier. So take a second here to say whether or not you'd like to learn about Market Sharp or Surefire Local or both. All righty. We're going to close up the poll. We'll have another chance at the end to do this again, so don't fear if you missed out. Um, and then, guys, you can take it away again. All right. Well, thanks, Michelle and Bob. Thanks for that information. You know, it's 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 quite a job just keeping up on all these changes that take place and how things like SEO works and all that kind of stuff. So, so thanks for your input there. Um, yeah. Let's carry on with key number four. And this is a big one. This is something that it's a word that I heard a friend of mine use once. Um, Rich from Monopolize Your Marketplace. He came up with this word called conversion ability of your site. And uh, I think it's something many of us don't put enough consideration into. So we're just going to spend a couple minutes on this. We're not drilling down into all the conversion tactics that could be used on a site, just a few because of time, uh, a few that you can probably do right away. But I think it's important that we understand you get somebody to site, are they going to convert? Because that's really what matters. And by convert, oftentimes that means they reach out to you with either a form fill, a phone call, or maybe an online chat or something like that uh, to express their interest. And hopefully, in most of our businesses, the goal to convert is to get an appointment set up. So that's typically what we're trying to do here. So conversion rate is really what we're after with all this stuff. We really want to know what's converting. So here's the point I wanted to make about conversion in your website. Make sure you're giving your clients a complete choice in the method they want to use to respond. And it might seem like it should go without saying, and maybe it should, but I've seen way too many sites that make it very difficult for people to respond. I've been on sites where I'm, I just want to call this company, and I cannot get to their phone number for the life of me. And it is so frustrating to try to dig for something like that. So I think there's essentially about three ways people will respond online. First off, phone is a big one. Uh, obviously, web forms. They're filling out a form. But also live chat is kind of coming on strong in terms of people's interest in that. So here's just illustrations of some of these things. On the left, make sure you have a prominent phone number. We showed that on the Twin City Signing Professional site. Got their phone number with a big arrow next to it. Uh, a form fill for whatever you're offering, whether it's a free code or maybe a quote or a consumer guide or something like that. Or maybe you're doing sweepstakes of some sort. And a lot of companies have made those work quite well where you're building your database and allowing yourself to communicate with those people with a lead nurturing program and convert that sweepstakes inquiry into somebody that's truly interested in your product. But I just want to chat for a minute here on this, on this online chat thing. And here's an example of a company that uses online chat. As you can see, and this isn't new to you guys, this is something where on your site, down pops a little thing there, click to start a chat. And you know, there's many people that really aren't ready to make a phone call. They're not ready. Maybe the anxiety level is a little too high for that, or they don't want to fill out a form for some reason. But they don't mind getting online and clicking online chat and going ahead and getting a couple questions answered right there. So we think this is a big area that many sites lack, and you're losing some response methods, and you're losing some conversion ability if you don't have this. And typically what happens, obviously, is when you click that, up pops a little window and you immediately start chatting with somebody in the business. And that's a big thing. Now, there's a couple different options in terms of solutions out there, and these things aren't very expensive. Um, one is, and here's what I wouldn't recommend. I wouldn't recommend trying to get an online chat service in your business and having your staff try to man it. Because when you think about it, a lot of people are online in the evening and things such as that. So you'll get frustrated. And obviously, uh, online chat can actually be a detriment if all of a sudden you got it and people try to use it and they say things like, oh, sorry, no one's available right now. Um, so you don't want to do that. Make sure it's continually available. Now, there's two types of services that are out there with continual availability. And one of them is staffed by professionals that are trained up and know the things to shoot for. And I'm, I'm getting a little noise in the background, and I'm not sure what I'm hearing there, but I hear like uh, people talking. So maybe, maybe someone can get on top of that. Um, so you got some staff that can man this for you, and again, their goal is to get that converted to getting information and, and hopefully getting it to an appointment. But there's also new ones that are, have artificial intelligence. 
And what those do is they're really not people that are manning them. And they just come up with the right questions and the right answers to the typical questions and do it for you. Both have advantages. So you might want to investigate that and try to figure out a way that you can get this working in your business. So converting leads is really much more than closing sales because that's the way we always used to think about leads is what's your closing ratio? You know, and, and that's something you really want to go beyond. Um, I think what's going on here is I'm hearing an echo of my voice and I'm not sure if someone else online has a speaker going or something like that. And sorry for interrupting, and, but it's kind of making it difficult for me to talk. I'm hearing myself back. Um, so converting leads is really more than closing sales. And we think there's five sales you have to make in your whole process to optimize your business. And first off, sale number one is figure out a way to generate an inquiry. And, and that goes for online marketing like we're discussing today, but also any other type of marketing that you're generating. Get an inquiry and create a spark of interest, as I like to call it, because that's where the whole process begins. But of course, it's not where it ends. Sale number two is, okay, you got an inquiry. Now you got to convert that thing to an appointment. And that's a huge thing. And you got to train up your staff to make sure they are skillful at doing that. And also things like response time, especially with web leads, is critical. You've got to get back to your web leads literally within minutes if you want to maximize results with them. So make sure you're, you have facility to do that as well. So that's sale number two. Sale number three is, okay, you got an appointment set. Now let's make sure it all follows through and ends up being a complete presentation or a full demo of your products and services. That's a sale that has to be made. And then sale number four is the one we're most commonly uh, familiar with, and that's a salesperson making a presentation and converting that to a customer. And sale number five is one we really need to be concerned about nowadays, and that's converting your new customer, not just to a customer, but a lifetime customer and a raving fan. And that's when you really do achieve total success is when you get good at making all five of those sales in your sales and marketing process. And uh, you got any weak spots there? Because the business is booming, like I showed you from Harvard University, it's time to really shore these things up and get a little better at them. So on to key number five, showcase your absolute best online. And what we're talking about here is your online reputation and things like online reviews and such as that. This is huge. I know personally when I'm looking for a hotel, and I'm sure you guys are the same way, or a good restaurant, that's where I'm going. I'm going and finding some reviews about what people thought about that. I mean, what could be better and easier to really get a read on something or a company by going there? And I got some statistics maybe I'll share with you in a bit. But Bob, maybe you want to make a comment or two of a couple of these slides that are coming up here on online reviews. This is really big nowadays. Yeah, so it's one of the things that, that we talk about all the time. It's become a, a very big deal in terms of getting ranked and getting traffic to your site. And as Tim said, there are very few customers out there that will do business with you if you have bad reviews. So we focus on good reviews and we focus on getting lots of them and really sending that, that signal to the search engines that, you know, hey, we're, we're really good at this. Uh, so there's a couple of components that you see here. This is a screenshot from our platform, from the review section of our platform, where we we have a, a, a tool in there that actually allows us to send requests to customers and have those requests come back to us as reviews on Google and on Facebook and, and a few other places. Um, so we get we bring those reviews back and we, get, we keep an average score and we like to make sure that's as high as possible. Certainly 4.4 is an acceptable score and you know having a bad one every once in a while is not a big deal. Um, but you'll see that over on the right hand corner in the in the lower right hand corner There's the reply buttons. We want to make sure and we provide that mechanism for people We want to make sure that you reply to every review even if it's a five Right, and, and if you're out there telling people um, You know thanking people for your uh, five-star reviews Explaining what happened on the ones that occasionally don't go very well um, and and That is a very big deal people see you as somebody who's engaged in, in you know, what you're doing with customers. They see you as somebody who cares about your reputation. Um, we think it's very, very important to answer every one. Um, I, I was at, at Harvard at the, actually the Joint Center for Housing Studies a couple of weeks ago, and there was a presentation that was made there um, where a gentleman got up and he's in this business just like we are and, and said the same thing. He said the, the 
correct percentage of reviews that you need to respond to is 100%. You must do this. And, and when you do it, you'll not only do the right thing for speaking to your customers the right way, um, but you'll be speaking to the search engines the right way too. Um, there, there is also a tool out there, and, and there, are, there are other tools similar to this, like Guild Quality, where uh, the, there are services that you can, you can have that will send out requests for reviews for you. Um, in this case, this is our uh, example from earlier, Twin City Signing Professionals, and they've been doing this for years. They've, they've got, in, you can see in the lower right-hand corner, 800 plus uh, siding reviews. And when you look at that and you see that on a map, you can really see how they dominate their marketplace and how their average ranking is very close to five. Um, that, that's the kind of signal that tells a customer um, that they're just excellent, right? And, and when, when a customer sees something like this, they want to do business with you. So these kinds of services, in addition to um, the getting of Google reviews and, and Facebook and Yelp and all of those things that we do locally, um, all of that adds up to an excellent reputation, which means you know, that customer feels like they have permission to do business with you, and, and that really, really helps to make, sh make sure that lead flow is coming in the right way. All right, thanks, Bob. You know, as it relates to online reviews, uh, just think of some of these stats. 84% of people trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. It's kind of hard to believe, but I think it's true. Seven out of 10 customers will leave a review for a business if they're asked for, asked to do so, and, and so forth and so on. Uh, this is a great infographic. It's got 50 stats you need to know about online reviews, and some of these will kind of shake you in your boots, and you'll go, oh, i got to spend some time on this. So if you'd like this infographic, just send me an email at tim at marketsharp.com and request the online review graphic, and I'll get it off to you, and I'd suggest you take this to your business. And here's the deal about online reviews. You know, you're going to get some just by default, but you got to have a strategy for this. And you've got to get absolutely as many as you can and certainly as many positive ones as you can. So I think there's a brand new, important new metric that we got to be concerned with in our business nowadays. And I got some letters put together there, P-O-R-C-R. -R. And what these stand for, what that stands for is positive online review conversion rate. Keep track of this. And what that is is the number of positive online reviews divided by your completed jobs. And you want to continually raise that and raise that and raise that to the point where you get that as good as it can be. So that is a metric we really not a, got to start measuring so we can see how good a job we're doing on that. So key number six, finally, and hang on, we're going to give some stuff away in a bit. Um, know your numbers. And this should go without saying, but I can't tell you how many people I talk to that spend money on web strategies and do this and do that, and I ask them, well, how's it working? And they go, you know, I don't know. You know, they, the people that I give this money to to do it for me says it's working. Yeah, well, oftentimes they're, they're saying things like, Wow, we did good for you this month. We got you 341 clicks to your site. Those don't pay any bills. Clicks don't. It's conversions you're after. So you got to make sure you have a way to really dig deep into your numbers to see what's working. I love this quote. It's been around for a long time. This gentleman's name is John Watermaker. And it's kind of a famous quote. He said, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is... I don't know which half that is. You know, now, he didn't have what we have nowadays, which is easy mechanisms to track and follow all this stuff. He couldn't track that. We can't. So we no longer have an excuse not to know what's working in our business or not. So let's do the best job we can. And I love this lesson in knowing your numbers. Many of you are familiar with this. UPS trucks drove 2.5 billion miles last year. The company said by doing one thing, save them driving 28 million miles and 3 million gallons of fuel. And you probably never would guess what it is, but they just route their drivers to essentially never turn left. Because they've learned, some geek there learned that, man, if we had these drivers turn left all the time, it's totally inefficient. They're idling, waiting on for oncoming traffic to go by before they can turn left, and all sorts of things like that. See, that's a great example of what knowing your numbers can really do in terms of a shift in strategy. So the question I got for you guys, do you have any left turns in your business? Is there anything in your processes that maybe could be improved? 
And I, I got a neat little form for you, uh, a little worksheet coming up for you in a couple slides that will hopefully help you identify some of these things so you can react. Really what we're talking about here is have a mechanism to get key performance indicators out of your business. Just like dashboards in your car that tells you the story of what's going on with your car, do the same thing for your business. At a glance, see what's going on. It's going to put you in a position to be able to make the right adjustments to get better. Here's an example. It comes out of Market Sharp. Um, it's an operating statement dashboard report. And uh, you could have up to 50 different metrics here. I got it whittled down to just a few here. But wouldn't it be great to know how many inquiries you're getting, how many are turned into appointments, how many are confirmed, how many are issued, how many are sold, how many are canceled, finance rejection, net sales, you know, things like um, some rates of inquiry to net sold, presentation net sold. Here's one that a lot of people really like, net sales per lead issued. So every time you issue a lead, either to a salesperson or from a given lead source, it brings in this amount of revenue to your company and net sales. Good stuff to know. These are the kind of numbers that can help you. So Bob, you want to share a couple of things in terms of some numbers you can get out of things such as Google Analytics and dig deeper into web uh, metrics? Sure. Thanks, Tim. Uh, and we, we have a, a platform that we call the Showfire Local Marketing Cloud. And in, in that platform, we bring in uh, something like, and, and it changes all the time, but the last number I heard was 38 different data sources. Google Analytics is obviously one of them, and we want to be paying attention to that and understanding you know, the kind of traffic that we're getting and where it's coming from and how long people are staying on websites and, and what kind of goal completion rates we have and pay a lot of attention to that kind of thing. Uh, but in addition to that, we want to be paying attention to a, a lot of other things like the, the kind of review scores that people are having and, and the kind of keywords that are driving traffic to websites. So it's all about bringing all of this data together and looking at it in a, in a way that, that tells us, you know, what happens when, when one thing goes up, does everything else go up? Or, you know, sometimes there's, uh, you know, inverse relationships and we want to be, be really paying attention to what's going on. Um, in, in this case, you know, Tim is highlighting some of the ups and downs that you can see it's not always everything straight up and and sometimes it's okay for things to go down as long as we keep our eye on the prize and and you know in, in this webinar we're talking about about traffic but we're also turning browsers into buyers right so it's all about um, conversion rate and and form fill sub submission rates and and phone call rates so that we can keep an eye on everything and we bring all of this data together as Tim does on on the uh, uh, CRM side and making sure that we understand what's actually working and what isn't so we don't have to be John Wanamaker wondering which half of our uh, marketing or which half of our uh, sales force or which half of our you know installation team isn't isn't performing the way they need to. Um, so we, we're just showing you a little bit more data here you know location signals we have um, webmaster tools it gives us that kind of insight into what Google sees and and so we can make adjustments when we're looking at this kind of data we can make adjustments to how we build the website so that Google will see the right thing that we want them to see and therefore rank us either in the right place or rank us higher on the page or for the proper keywords so there's all these relationships between the things that we do and the data that we look at and the result that we get and and so that's what we're trying to do here is to is to put it all in one place so that we can look at it and clients can look at it and make the proper decisions to, to get the right result. Any comments so, on this particular slide, Bob? Digging a little deeper? Well, this one, is, this one is from Webmaster Tools and it's about, you know, average position, right? We, we look at keywords. If you look at the keywords down the left-hand column and, and you can see every one of them has a different uh, position. Now, a little bit further down. There you go. And so we look at the different keywords that we think are driving traffic to the site. And if you go over to the right, you can see which ones are driving more impressions, right? Higher impressions would be keywords that are more prominent, right? We talked about prominence as being one of the signals. And then uh, position would tell us where they are on the page. And obviously, the keywords that are higher on the page are more important to us, and we want to think about those. And so, so reports like this can guide us in in ways that help us to write better content, to write more content around certain words that matter. Um, they, they help us to target the website 
a, you know, much better than just kind of guessing. Uh, th this kind of data is, is what drives keyword research for us, helps us to target blog writing programs. What we write in social media is all derived from the kind of data that we're able to, to see in the cloud and on, you know, everything that we look at so that we're able to, um, you know, make more intelligent decisions. That's what it's all about. All right, excellent. Well, listen, let's review a couple things. Um, if you remember, we started off with a very simplistic three-step marketing plan for success. Have something good to say, say it well, and say it often. Try to give you some ideas of how you can handle all three of those things with what we chatted about here today. But let's review the things we talked about. First off, have that great message that separates your company from the rest. Okay? And then from there, go on and make sure your site has great design and content that will truly stop visitors in their tracks. Next, effectively and consistently drive prospects to your site. Your things like SEO, pay-per-click, um, you know, just people putting in a URL and however you're going to do it with offline marketing, driving them to the site, so forth and so on. Make sure you do that. And then make sure your site converts. Don't just get people there and have them go away. Make sure it's got mechanisms in there that will convert to what you want to happen. And then maximize your online reviews because that's a big deal in your future. And then continue to tweak and refine by knowing what your numbers are. And that never stops, continually getting better. And, you know, in the companies that excel and grow like crazy and are doing great in this boom time we got, they're the ones that are doing all this stuff, and especially the last thing where they know their numbers and they're making these adjustments in their business and uh, just getting better at what they do. So this might be the most important part of today's webinar uh, that we can offer you. And what this is, is this is a little planner. We got in the handout section of your control panel, so you can click on that and get it right now if you wish. Um, but what we want you to do here, and this is important. It's one thing to come to a webinar like this and listen and go, yeah, 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 and then the webinar is over and you just go back to work. <laughs> and not much changes. But if you will take maybe some of the things we talked about here today and honestly rate your business in these six areas we chatted about here today on a scale of one to five, and then this form will let you also make some notes of how you might be able to improve in each category that might need improvement. This is how you can make some changes in your business. So do me a favor. Don't go ahead you know, and print it now if you don't want to and things like that. But just do a quick thing in your mind right now and add this up in your head as you go. So first off, we talked about have something good to say. Have that value proposition. A unique selling proposition is totally different than your competitors. Do you really have one? I mean, really have one? If so, give yourself a five. If you're kind of just coming across like everybody else, give yourself a one or somewhere in between. So go ahead and do that. Pick a number there. How about stop visitors in your tracks by having a compelling site? You think your site really does that? Rate yourself. And I'm going to ask you to add these up when we're done, so keep track. Okay, third, generate quality traffic, getting people to your site. Are you doing a great job with that? Are a lot of people visiting your site? Do you have things like SEO, pay-per-click working for you, or other mechanisms that are getting people to your site? Rate yourself there. Conversion ability. People get to your site. Are a large percent of them, or a decent percent of them, converting to a form fill, a call, an appointment set, whatever you want them to do? Fifth, are you doing a great job with online reviews? Rate yourself from one to five there. And finally, are you knowing your numbers? Are you analyzing the numbers? Do you have mechanisms to get these numbers out of your business so you can truly measure that? So hopefully you followed me as I went through that and you picked some numbers up and you came up with a sum of where you're at right now. And I'm not going to tell you what's a passing grade or not right here, but I would like this. And some of you will do this, some of you won't. Go ahead and put in a Q&A window what number you ended up with for your business. It's kind of curious to look at that. I'm not going to share it with anybody or anything like that. I think it's just important exercise we go through to help us be a little honest with ourselves and find areas where we can improve, just like UPS did when that guy figured out that, man, if we don't, drive, if we don't turn left, we're going to do a lot better as a company. So go ahead and put that number that you arrived at for your business in there and just put it in a Q&A window. It's kind of your way of admitting to the world, yeah, we can improve. So hopefully you'll make use of this form and get some ideas rolling in your business. So let's wind down. And again, we're going to give away the, the prize here in just a little bit. A lot of stuff going on here, isn't there? You know, this web stuff really isn't for the faint of heart. You know, my suggestion is that we don't do this kind of stuff much at MarketSharp in terms of 
uh, web strategies and things such as that. We're more in a CRM game. But my advice to anybody who really wants to grow your business in this boom time, get some help with this. Find some people that know this business and let them help you with this. Don't try to reinvent the wheel with that geek brother-in-law that you got or some local company that puts up sites that might be good at selling pizza. But our business is way different than that. So get some help with this. You know, and the trouble is, when you think of this technology stuff in your business, here's the latest as of May 2017. There are about 5,381 marketing technology solutions for you to choose from to help you with the stuff we talked about here today. That's a little overwhelming. And I got this thing, and I got a magnifying glass out, and I looked, and sure enough, our company made it. And then I looked, and sure enough, so did Surefire Local. But the point is, this can be frustrating. You try to figure out what you can use to help you with this. So my suggestion is just talk to companies like Surefire Local, talk to us at Market Sharp, talk to the folks at Guild Quality, and, of course, there's other folks that can help you too. Um, for those of you who don't have a CRM, we'd love to talk to you at Market Sharp. It's really something we call it a business in a box. It's kind of the core of everything we're talking about here today. It helps you in the admin, marketing, sales, and production part of your business. It has about 314 40 built-in success elements ready to use. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And uh, the neat part is it integrates with some of the best tools in the industry. Many of you use a lot of this stuff. We mentioned things like guild quality. Of course, we work directly with Surefire Local and a bunch of other things that maybe you're using in the business to help you out. So we got a free resource for you, and I believe this is also in your handouts area. And this has really got some great information in it just to help you with your business. 20-page white paper loaded with stats, ideas, and strategies about the seven biggest mistakes most remodelers make every day that are wasting your hard-earned leads, causing you to lose sales. So that's free for you, immediate access to the handout section of your uh, control panel there. So Michelle, are you with us? I think we might have another poll. Yep. I want to give something away. I am. I'm still here. Yep. We'll, we'll do the poll real quick, and then we'll get on to the uh, Google Home Mini. So like earlier, uh, we are seeing if you would like to learn how Surefire Local and Market Sharp can, ha can help you out, uh, if you would like to learn more about Market Sharp or Surefire Local or both, please select one. And um, if you have a consultation with us, you will be eligible to get a Google Chromecast. So that's really exciting. Um, yeah, so take a minute here to fill that out, and then we will get on to what I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. <laughs> The Google Home Mini. Yeah, maybe Michelle. While while you, do you still have the poll question up? I do. Yes. Okay. Maybe while people are finishing that up, um, I'm not sure if you're monitoring the Q and A window or maybe Steve is. But have any questions come in that maybe we could handle while people finish this up, and then we'll get a, get on to. We haven't. We haven't actually had any questions come through, but we did have a lot okay. of people answer the uh, the questionnaire thing, so that was great. I know I won't share many, those numbers, but we yeah, did have a what good did they, answer. What did they typically come in at? I'm curious. Um, there was a range of, there was a lot of 18s, anywhere from between 15 to 20. There were some 21s. Yeah. Um, there was a couple low ones, below five, or there okay. was just one. And then there was, um, there was uh, yeah, so it was a good range. All right. Sounds good. All right, why don't we wrap up the poll, and then we'll get on to giving away the, the Google Mini Home. Sounds good. All right, so today's lucky winner of the Google Home Mini is Alexis Patron. Congrats, Alexis. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address, and we will ship that right out to you. And huge bit thanks to Tim and Bob today for joining us, and thank you to all of our attendees. Please be sure to join us for more upcoming webinars. You can uh, check that out in our newly updated SurefireLocal.com. We have a link at the top of the homepage for the webinar that's occurring next week. Um, and I want to mention one last time, just in case you had stepped away during the poll, um, you can either select yes to hearing more about how Surefire Local and Market Sharp can help you and attend a complimentary digital consultation with us, and you will get a Google Chromecast. So if you're interested, you can email marketing at SurefireLocal.com. And also, please take a minute to fill out the survey at the end and let us know how we did today and what topics you would like to hear about in the future. Thanks again, and have a great afternoon.